What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Import Modify. On this episode, we'll be focusing on the head. Now, if you just saw the speed clip, showed me power washing the head, we got that all done. I got most of the build, the, the bulky residue built up out of the head and the valley is looking a lot cleaner. I still gotta go more in detail and get some of the residue out, but looking at the oxidization on this head here, uh, I'm gonna more than likely have to end up painting this head. But I did go ahead and media blasted some of the items on the engine. And what I did was I media blasted the rear main assembly. I got a lot of the oxidization off of the uh, cam angle sensor. I keep wanting to say crank angle sensor for some damn reason, but I got most of that off. I had to tape a lot of it off to ensure no media got inside the casing, but I was able to remove a lot of it and uh, it did leave some heavy pitting. So I'm gonna repaint these items. These are the coil brackets, the cam angle sensor bracket, and also the thermostat housing outlet. So we'll just go ahead and knock all those out. But first thing on the order of things to do is clean this head as thorough as I can. And I'm gonna be doing that with a set of wire brushes and a brake cleaner and compressed air. And also after I'm done with all that, we will start the reassembly process. So. I'm not going to keep jabber jawing away, so we're going to go ahead and start the cleaning process. And I'm going to try to get done as much as I can on this episode so that uh, we can start assembling the engine back together. Because I like to hurry up and get this engine back together in order to move on to the transmission. Then after the, we're done with the transmission, we'll start focusing on the car itself. So anyway, let's go ahead and do it. I finally got it cleaned up to my standards. I've been scrubbing on this thing for about two hours now and the more I scrub, the more I want it to get cleaner, but I think I'm at a good point now to uh, call it good. But this is how it looks now. It's nice and clean on the inside, in the valleys. I got the outside casing cleaned as well. I got the surfaces nice and sanded. I even cleaned inside the ports. And look at the combustion chamber now. I got everything cleaned up inside there as well. And on the intake side as well, it looks about the same. So we're good to go on the head now. I'm gonna mask it off. And then after I'm done masking it off, I'm gonna look around the shop. I think I have some aluminum uh, engine paint and we will uh, spray it to, look at, to make it look like new. And then after that, I'm pretty much gonna call it the night and then we'll come in tomorrow and start reassembling the head. Alright guys, I got everything masked off now. And I was digging around for some paint and I don't have any aluminum paint left so I'm gonna have to pick some up tomorrow. And then whenever I get the paint, we'll shoot a layer on this bad boy, let it cure up, and then we'll start reassembling the head. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. guys I got the head all nice and painted up now and it come out pretty good 
Now that's how a head should look whenever you're assembling a motor. You're refreshing it all. A lot better than what it was before by a long shot. And couldn't be happier with it. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get this head all assembled. And I got the exhaust side of the valve stem seals out. And I forgot that I had this tool all along. And the kit that I talked about in the previous episode with the brackets actually does come with a tool like this, but they're crap. And this one I had bought a long time ago. And I started digging around, I found it. And that tool makes life a lot easier, basically. Uh, I was using some needle nose at first and it's very tedious to get these out with a needle nose. Now, if you don't have the tool, you can do it with a straight long needle nose like that but this tool actually makes life a whole lot easier. It's just got to circle in with some ribs to grab the seal. And basically all you do is just insert it right there over the valve stem seal, twist it and give it some pulls, and then it comes right out. So I'm gonna go ahead and time warp this, get all these valve stems out. And after that, we have to install the new valve stem seals and a good thing about the RB engine is all the valve stem seals are the same part number, so there's no exhaust side and intake, intake side difference. So just take these out, put those in, and then from there we'll be able to start installing the uh, valve stems, uh, valve springs, and everything else. So let's go ahead and do it. Well, if I told you it was real easy, I'd be lying because I got mad arm pump right now. Oof. But it did help out to uh, put some WD-40 in there while I was wiggling it in circles is what I was doing. I was I had it on like that and basically wiggling it around and then giving it some pull pressure and just kind of working it out one by one. But we got them all out now. There's all the old ones. We have the new ones in the bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these. And the way I like to do on these is I get a socket that is just big enough to go over the nipple piece of the seal itself. And then I make sure that I have oil underneath it. And then I just press it onto the valve stem. Well, the valve guide itself in there, so. All right, so I successfully got all the valve stem seals in and the tools that I used to to get the job done is I use this tool that I use to take it out with. I use it to place it on to the guide itself. Then I use a 10 millimeter socket, deep socket with a six inch, and six inch, ex, sorry, a 10 millimeter deep socket with a six inch long extension. And I placed it over the seal like that. And then I just took my dead blow and gave it a solid whack now you don't want to hit it too hard whenever you do it just a solid thump on each one and it'll seat in place and i'll also use wd-40 on the inside of the seals just to make sure that it's lubricated and will slide on evenly so i did all 24 of them we're good to go on this so now i'm just going to clean up the valves a little bit and then from there we'll be seating in the valves but anyway on the valves what i like to do as well is i like to take some uh, bearing grease and then I coat the outer well the uh, the uh, top of the stem right here with bearing grease and then uh, I slide it through the valve stem seal and if you look on the edge right there it's, it's chafered it's not a sharp edge so we should be fine pushing it through without a plastic sleeve just be very careful when you do that and then once it is through the seal, I take more bearing grease and I put it around the edge and I also put them inside the keepers as well. So whenever we go to compress the spring down, we put the keepers on the groove right there and the bearing grease will keep it in place. And then we release the spring and the retainer right there will catch the keepers and hold the spring in place. So.
right guys, this has been a long, tedious process. I gotta tell you, out of building a whole engine, this thing is the most tedious thing out of all the things to do. For me it is at least. But I'm down to the last valve spring here on the exhaust side. And I have the keepers lubricated with the bearing grease on the outside holding it to the screwdriver. And I also put bearing grease on the inside of the keeper. And I also got bearing grease on the upper part of the stem where the keepers sit. So what I'm gonna do is use my lever. I'm gonna compress it down. And then while it's compressed, I'm gonna grab that screwdriver and then put the keeper on the valve stem where it should be and the bearing grease is gonna hold it in place. And then once I have it in place, I'll grab the other one with the screwdriver and put it on the stem as well. And then at that point, with both keepers on the stem, you're gonna be very careful whenever you're releasing the spring uh, pressure to ensure that the retainer slides evenly on the keepers. And then once it's slid up, it's locked in place like these here, and you're good to go. So hopefully I can get good footage of this. That's why I hadn't been shooting it. It's just very long and tedious. But let's go ahead and see if we can get this all on, you know, a good video capture of this so you guys can get the idea. Let's go ahead and get it done. So we finally got all the valve springs in the head. Everything's secure now. It took me a very long time to do this. It was just tedious. I had to find my rhythm. Once I had my rhythm, I just kept going with it. But I'm gonna wait until tomorrow because it's getting late and I'm pretty burned out at this point. And tomorrow when I come in, we're gonna finish installing the bucket shims, head, uh, not head, sorry. The bucket shims, cams, and caps. We'll get it all torqued down and then the head will be completely put back together and then at that point I will end the episode and then the next episode after that we'll focus on putting the engine all together so I'll see you guys tomorrow alright guys just got off of work we're gonna finish off the assembly on the head and what we have left to do for the head is the buckets the cams and the cam caps I also got to replace the seals so I need to take the caps off and everything and clean the cams up especially around the sealing surfaces for the seals so I was looking at the torque specs. It calls from nine to 12 Newton meters. If you convert 12 to foot pounds, it's 8.8 .8 foot pounds. And then we're gonna use a inch pound torque wrench to give me more of a precise torque. I like to use inch pounds on the cam caps. And 8.8 .8 foot pounds times 12 inches, cause 12 inches equals a foot. It gives you 105.6. And I'm gonna shoot just a little bit lower than that. So I got it set at 100 inch pounds, which will be perfect for this application. So I'm gonna go ahead now and clean these things up, get everything ready to go. And then we'll torque this bad boy down. And then whenever you're doing a torquing on it, you always wanna go from the inside out. And the way they have it torqued on the sequence is in pairs. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine ten and so on so you can evenly distribute the torque on the bolts and compress the cam into the head evenly so that's what we're going to do but first let's clean it up
All right, so what I like to do after I clean all the caps off, I like to clean the bolts off as well, and then I like to use fresh oil and oil them up really good so they're nice and lubricated. So we got all that done. I did run some Scotch-Brite over the sealing surfaces of the cam seals and did tend to little rust spots here or there on the cam. So we got those all cleaned up now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some assembly lube inside the journal areas and the caps for the cams. And then I'll throw a little bit of assembly lube on the lobes and the areas where the cam caps uh, ride. And then after that, we'll be all set to put in the cam caps on the cams and torquing it down. All right, so I got the whole head prepped and ready to be torqued down. I gotta hurry up because I got a little bit of RTV that was supplied by Nissan that needs to be set before it dries. That's just to ensure that the oil doesn't get past the seal. It drains in back of the seal. That's just to ensure it doesn't leak out. But I got all the caps in the orientation that it needs to be. And you go up the front exhaust cap and it tells you the, the number orientation. Just make sure that all the other caps follow suit. The same with the intake. And they're one through seven, one through seven. So we're good on this. I got them all started. So now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this to get them evenly down. And then after that, we'll use a torque wrench and finish it off. Man, I was freaking out. My GoPro aired out on me and I thought all this footage just got erased. So I was like, Ugh. anyway, we got the head done guys and it looks pretty damn awesome. Looks beautiful, nice and painted up. Cams and everything are installed now. All the seals are good on that. So this thing's practically refreshed. And uh, like I was saying before on the cam caps, uh, pay attention to the orientation of the front cam caps that encase the seals. They let you know the orientation of the numbers and then you just want to make sure those numbers follow the same suit all the way to the back and that will ensure that you do have the cam caps in the right position also uh, got the rear the rear covers on as well and after i did finish the time warp i did ensure that the torque was right i went with another pass just to verify everything was good and we are good on this thing we're ready to go so that baby looks nice and refurbished and new but speaking of new, check out the uh, painted parts that I did earlier in the episode. They come out pretty damn good. Cam angle sensor bracket, thermostat housing outlet, the coil brackets, rear main seal assembly. That's the old rear main seal. I just left it in there as a masking so I didn't have to worry about paint getting inside the inner ring. And the cam angle sensor itself. This thing looks cherry now. I can't believe how good it looks compared to what it was. So it's all refurbished and painted like new. So when we put this engine together, it's going to look like a whole new engine. Couldn't be happier. What I do have left to do is the oil pump. I have to tear the oil pump down, ensure that the gearing is good inside the oil pump. And then once I have it torn down, I'm going to mask the whole inside of it off with electrical tape. And also the orifices where the spring and all that sits for the, uh, the pressure. And I'm just going to make sure the whole casing is uh, protected. And I'm probably going to uh, get all that nasty grime off of it. Then I'm going to run it through the uh, bead blaster and paint it the same way I did that. So that way it can look all brand new. And then I'll reassemble the whole thing back together. That's pretty much the plan on the oil pump. So we'll see how that goes. If I screw it up, then I'll just have to buy a new one. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead now and wrap up this episode. I apologize for it taking such a long time. But I did have to maintenance my personal ride and also my wife. So... Life gets in the way. What do you do? Also, new subscribers to the channel, thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. Uh, stay tuned, guys. A lot of good content coming your way on this build. So, anyway, I'm going to end it. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And see you guys on the next episode.